Okay, welcome back. In uh, this video, we're going to take a look at quartz and tonality. And it might be a good idea to get a cup of coffee for this one, since we're going to go a little bit more advanced with um, some of the functions. But let's start very simple, and let's start with just showing the chord notation, which, in case you were wondering, um, is just the same as regular notation, but we leave out the white space in between notes. So if we have something like this, that is a chord. And this is actually the chord progression that we'll be using uh, to build our piece. So in this series, we're going to build a complete piece and we're going to base that on uh, this harmonic progression right here, which I didn't invent. I actually sort of stole, maybe I can say borrowed from the library. And the library, we find this here on the right side and it has um, lots of sort of examples or, or chords that we can use or melodies that we can use or rhythms that we can use um, divided into different categories here. And we won't go into uh, this notation. You can see here that we can actually write the chord name in case you happen to be a jazz cat. Um, but what I wanted to show you is this uh, harm proc right here. So this is in the library and right now I sort of copy and pasted this and I adapted it a little bit, um, but we can actually use this by using a library import. I will show that um, in a second. First, we're going to go and talk about some of the chord functions. So a very simple one um, is called chord pitch unique. Let's start there. So with chord pitch unique, um, we can filter out notes that are double. So if we have something like this, C4, C4, G4, um, that should be a four. Um, and then we have, uh, let's say D4, D4, F4, maybe F, we have something like that. What, what this function will do, let's actually look up the documentation again, is it will remove double notes. So um, we have some double C4s here, some double D4s. If I play this right now, those have been um, removed instead of this, where you can see those doubles. Now, um, you might be wondering, how is this useful? I could just remove them here. Of course, these functions are meant to use after you generated chords in a more programmatic kind of way. So it's, a, it's an easy cleanup function. Let's set it to a variable for good practice. So we'll call it proc1, and we press command E to put it in the environment. Now. Let's say we wanted to sort these chords. For that, we can use the function very beautifully named chord progression. And um, let's again see what that one is all about. You can see this function will sort the sequence of chords and pitches to the lowest or highest chord note. Um, so let's give it that proc1 progression. And let's evaluate that. And as we could see, we have a keyword here called sort. So we can say sort, and then let's try low first. And then we can try high as well. I believe low is the default. Right, so that's another um, useful utility function. We'll set that to proc2 and evaluate that as well. Now, if you want to generate chords, there's lots of options. Um, one of them would be gen chord two, but as that implies, we also have a regular gen chord and we have a gen chord uh, three. Uh, this one first wants to know how many chords you want. Let's say I want eight. Then it wants to know the size of the chord. Let's say um, I want three. And then it wants a list um, where it's going to base the chords upon. So I can say C4. Um, let's do, let's go with some sort of a progression. G4, F4, uh, A flat four, B maybe. And then let's see what that sounds like. Right, so that gives us a progression. We can uh, put these, um, the notes per chord inside the list. So we can do, we can alternate between three and four notes, for example. And we have some more, um, let's actually find this one. We have some more parameters that we can 
play around with, such as uh, transpose and uh, rotate. Um, we can give it an ambitus, which will filter the chords to a, a certain range. Um, so this can be a very useful one. And you can also check out the other one. So the Gen Chord 3, I believe, works with intervals rather than, um, yeah, intervals rather than pitches. And we have a regular Gen Chord. So all of this has just to do with the algorithm that is used um, under the surface, basically. So they will all behave a little bit differently, uh, despite having the same name and, and mostly the same arguments. All right, let's go with um, probably one of my favorite ones, um, which is the function called harmonic progression. And I tend to, most of my music tends to be fairly harmonic. Um, this function uh, really works the way I think about chords as well, which is in, in uh, skill steps. So what we can do with this is we can give it a, a list of um, skill steps that we want to use for a chord. So let's say I want to start with a tonic chord, then I want to move to the three, then I want to move to the four, maybe back to the two, and then to the dominant, and then to the seventh. So you give it that list, and then you just uh, specify the skill that you want to use. So Let's do, since we've been in C, let's do C harmonic minor. Um, and then there's one, one thing here that we actually can see if we look at the documentation. Um, the base here, we, the default is set to zero. Now, I think about my chords as in one, three, five, etc. So I need to set the base to one in order for this to, to actually behave the way I think about my chords. So let's evaluate this. Beautiful. Um, let's go with one more chord here. Maybe we can go one, three, two, four, two. And then. Right, so that's uh, indeed very much a harmonic progression. And we're gonna set that to a variable as well. Let's call it proc three. Now, um, there are some some more parameters that you can uh, that you can tweak here. Um, we can flatten them. We can set again the chord sizes. Um, all of these are are set to the default right now. Default is three. Default for a step is two. Um, so those make sense. But what if we want to have a little bit better voice leading? Well, another function that I really like is called the closest path, and it will actually try to closest path. It will actually try to um, find the chord that is closest to this one. So it will start to invert chords um, in order to make them sound smoother. So I can now do proc 3. So you see that the chords have been... Right, so a very handy um, feature to use. Now, if you want to have more direct access to a inversion, we can, of course, use the chord inversion function. Um, and let's go first with the root position. So we can C4, E4, G4, we give it a chord, and we play it, and we can see that it's in root position. Now we can go with second inversion and the first uh, to simply invert them. Now let's find the documentation for that as well. We can see that we have a couple more uh, parameters that we can choose from. We can include the root in the output along with the inversions. Um, we can specify some variants. And of course, we can set a seat once again as well. This is a very, uh, very handy one in a lot of scenarios. Uh, another handy one, which is more in the gener generative kind of category, is the chord variation, which can come up with variations for given chords. So for example, we can give it um, a D major chord and uh, what else? Maybe an A minor chord, A4. And this function, it, it doesn't change the interval size, but it mirrors the chord down and up to come up with um, infinite variations, basically. Which, of course, we can uh, fix again with our, our seed value. Uh, and you can, you can see this quite clearly if you use a gen loop on this, which we discussed uh, before. A gen loop, they, it will re-evaluate the function. So with this and the chord variation, you can just come up with complete uh, progressions.
which of course you could then uh, put in the chord progression function, sort of wrap that one around it to sort them again. Um, which works a little bit better if we don't use the gen loop there. Let's do a gen uh, loop here. Um, so very some very easy ways to come up with uh, different progressions. Now, for uh, the main part of the vi this video, I wanted to talk about um, tonality. And when we think about tonality, we usually think about skills um, or we think about chord progressions that we want to fit a certain section to. So um, to show you that thing which I mentioned before, to get things from the library, we can use the library function and then you'd have to know the name of something. So if we go to the library and uh, let's say I want to get some Bach uh, sections here. So for example, this one. The first thing I have to do is I have to specify the um, the main uh, dev library name. So we do this with a back quote, and then we can say uh, Bach G V eighteen. Then next you uh, specify the section, which you can see is also called G V eighteen. And then lastly, you specify the actual variable name of the specific section. So we have the V1, V2, V3. Uh, we can go with V3. And now you don't have to copy anything. If I evaluate this, it will fetch that from the library and we can uh, listen to it right away and use it um, in our main composing panel. Now let's say we want to use this uh, piece of music from Bach and map our own material on that. Uh, for that, we would want to get the what's called the harmonic path, so that we um, so that we know which which uh, notes or which which steps we can use. So for that, we can use the get harmonic path function, and um, we simply give it the the name of our import. So let's call this Bach, and I should not have a dash there. Evaluate that, and you can say get harmonic path of Bach, and it basically fetches all those notes. Um, in our case, I want to flatten this list so that we get one single list of the harmonic path, and of course, we want to set that to a variable as well. So I'll call that the Bach path. All right, so these are now the instructions that we can use when we create a melody. So let's start maybe by creating a melody by using the gen noise. Um, let's give it, I don't know, 128 values. And then we can use a vector map, which we saw before, um, which again, just a scale in it maybe. Um, A3. There are definitely easier ways to make skills than this, but um, like this, it's just a little bit more transparent. So we can see see more easily what's going on. So we have a vector map. Um, it takes the things we want to map it to, and then it takes a vector, which is the gen noise. Let's see what that sounds like. Right, so it's, it's always going it's to create 128 values, and it's going to map them to one of these nodes. Um, so now we can use this as an argument within our harmonic path function. So the harmonic path function, let's write it out first. Harmonic path. Um, that uh, This one. So it says, in its simplest form, a harmonic path creates a path made of any number of harmonic items to map onto a list or making up a pitch sequence. So we could use it simply like this. You could say uh, major, and then you can give it a minor melody. Uh, C3, F3, G3, etc. And instead of minor, it will make it major. That's the original, and this is with harmonic path. But we can go uh, much further with, with that one. So rather than give it this um, major kind of name, let's give it the path that we actually extracted from the, uh, from the library. So we call that the Bach path, and let's try that with our melody. 
right now our melody is a little bit short so instead of using that one let's use our um, our vector and let's listen to that Now let's say we want to add some variation to that. It still sounds a little bit too Bach-like. We can do a Gen Retrograde. Now of course this way we don't we only hear quarter notes because we only have pitches and we never did anything with lengths. Um, so if we want to do that, we can revisit or make OMN function again. We saw it in the introduction. We can set the length, uh, let's set it to eight notes. And then for pitch, we can use this. So we can say Bach pitch, of course, with set F, and then evaluate that. And we can now use it right here, and then we can play around with other um, elements a little bit. If I evaluate it like this, we only get one note because we um, this is by default used as the master length. So what we have to do is we have to set the span equal to pitch so that um, the pitch list will actually define the total length. And the nice thing with this is that now we can, uh, now that we have this sort of structure ready, we can simply um, change the, the harmonic path input or, or the vector for that matter um, to get come up with very different results. So let's, for example, try here to use our chords one, uh, see if that works. So that's this list right here. And then let's listen to that. Let's try that with uh, 16 notes. Let's try that without a ret retrograde to keep the original order. Uh, just as a, a teaser for the next video, I can put in velocity here and give it some values. to create some accents there. Right, so uh, we can have a lot of fun uh, with that one. This is uh, get harmonic path and harmonic path are very, very nice ones to learn. Um, there is a slightly more, um, I would say it's a little bit more advanced um, function than the harmonic path, which is called tonality map. The main differences, or, or one of the big differences between the two, is that harmonic path will actually try to keep the uh, original order. So all your, if you had chords in a specific inversion, they will all um, stay the same. Whereas um, tonality map, it actually really just maps the tonality itself. So in order to, to take a quick look at this, um, let's create a melodic line. Um, we can do something like this, um, we can just repeat the same line. So um, let's go with um, eight notes, I guess. I'm just gonna probably stay in C for this <laughs> for this whole series. And I'm so well on my way right now. Uh, let's do this. Let's do a double note. And I'm actually mapping out here one of the motifs we're gonna be using for our piece later on or something close to it, all right? Um, and the reason I use these double parentheses right here is that if we use a gen repeat today, they will always stay within their own uh, nested list, uh, which can be very useful later on. So let's listen to this. Right, just the same melody repeating over and over. Now, um, the next thing we need is we're going to need a path. So um, let's create a path uh, variable, which stands for the, for the harmonic path, of course. Um, and for this one, we're going to use the tonality series 
function. And tonality series, let's look that one up because this is the one that's uh, a little bit more complicated. This one doesn't actually output music, it outputs instructions that we can use for another, um, another function. So basically it outputs a, um, a yeah, a, a, a tonality, a, a series of tonalities. So it can be lists of different tonalities that you want to use. Um, let's say, for example, we want to have a harmonic minor and a major tonality that we want to use. So we're going to have two of them, right? And then uh, let's say we also want to have the first tonality should have the root of C3 and the second one, the major, should have the root of G4. Um, Let's leave, let's leave it like that for now and evaluate that. And you can see that this doesn't create any nodes. It just creates this, this instruction. It makes a list for you. And that list is what um, the tonality map function likes to see as its first argument. So we can specify the path now here, and then we can specify the melody that we want to use. So it's going to use whatever we created here as the, as the tonality instructions, and it's going to then map that to, in this case, our melodic one sequence, all right? So we first have a melody, then we, we say which tonalities we want to use and the roots of those. We can omit this. Um, I just want it to be a little bit fancy. And then we give that to tonality map. And then let's listen to that. Right, so now that we have this, there's uh, a lot of ways in which we can play around with this. So in tonality series, um, I gave it the root here, but um, there's many other things I can do. I can uh, rotate them, I can choose uh, a variant. Um, let's, for example, let's actually take a look at the map argument first. So this is uh, which how it will map the nodes to the sequence. So this can give quite different results. So I can map it to the octave of the original sequence. I can choose a step here. So I think this example is, is kind of clear. So, so what you can see is that the first, um, the first bar, it's in uh, C and it's in C harmonic minor. And then for the second bar, it will move to G and it will be in major. Um, so I could also set this to G3, for example, to make that lower. So it's doing C minor and then G major. I could also do uh, Lydian, for example, for the G. So there's a lot of different ways you can mess around with this. I can try C sharp three um, and then do major. Let's see. This can actually, if you want to go to the chromatic median, for example, you can go to E flat three and use major there. Now we can also, uh, with this, we can choose uh, which node we want to um, we want to move to, um, whether we should go to the closest node up or down. So to do that, we can say closest, and then we can say up. Or we can do down. And for the map, we can also choose uh, Spectra, which is great for spectral compositions.
So yeah, I hope that gives you a, a little introduction of this. I didn't want to show the tonality series uh, in detail, and I think I didn't. There's much more to it. Um, so if you want to get started with any of these, maybe start with the harmonic path first. Um, I find it to be a little bit easier to, to understand. Um, but yeah, definitely tonality series is also a very powerful one in combination with the tonality map. Let's finally set this to a variable to make it look a little bit better. And then we'll group these and I'll call this tonality map. And then here we have the functions for harmonic path, just so that it's a little bit clear to see which things belong together. Um, the, how do we call this? Um, harmonic melody. And close that function. All right, uh, so that is uh, a little bit about the chords and tonality. We're going to get more into that when uh, we start building our piece. Um, but first, we need to talk uh, about dynamics, something that I uh, quickly try to sneak in here. But uh, we should take a closer look at that as well.